can you please explain to us what you mean when you say true Israelites? Okay, so there's two sides to this. There is who are the true Israelites and where are they? And if those are not true Israelites in Israel, then who are they? Those are two different videos. We're going to talk about who is in Israel right now. Just my opinion, of course. But I've got a lot of history to back it up. And just so happens when I started my TikTok journey, I was all about conspiracies. And I did a lot of research and history into the bloodlines. The elite bloodlines that control everything. The puppet masters, okay? So just follow me and it's all going to make sense. Now, there were people left when Abram was called out of Ur. And these people started to migrate out. Some because they wanted to. Some because they were forced because of... Their child sacrifice and their Luciferian practices, they were not welcome. So they traveled north and they settled in what is modern day Ukraine between the Caspian Sea and the Black Sea. But before it was modern day Ukraine, it was called Khazaria, which gets its name from the settlers, the Khazarian Jews. And this is why genealogy in the Bible is so important. So if you know your bloodlines, the Khazars come from Togarma. Togarma comes from Gomer, who comes from Japheth who comes from Noah. Okay, so everyone comes from Adam and Eve, but they really come from the three sons of Noah, which is Ham, Shem, and Japheth. Abram was of the line of Shem. The land of Egypt is otherwise known as Ham and his descendants. And then you have Japheth, which is the nations and the Gentiles. So where they settled in Khazaria, they were really close to Russia. And all of these neighboring countries knew what they were doing with their child sacrifices and drinking of the blood. And Russia came up to them and said, we know what you are doing and you have to stop. You have to declare one of these three religions and follow them. Christianity, Judaism, or Islam. I believe those were the three, if my memory serves me right. Nonetheless, they chose to follow Judaism. I read this article. It says, where did this child sacrificing elite come from? If we trace them back a few thousand years, we can easily see these same practices being used by the Phoenicians. The statue down below is of Moloch Baal, a god who, is, who demands child sacrifice. It's on display in Rome. I'm going to find that statue and list it after I finish talking. The Phoenicians or the Canaanites worship Baal and practice child sacrifice. They spread out from Lebanon in the, from the Beirut area, which is one of the oldest ancient ports in the Mediterranean. Where did they go and spread to? They spread throughout the Mediterranean and set up colonies in Sicily, Carthage, Sidonia, Spain, Morocco, and traveled as far as Ireland. But did they migrate elsewhere? Interestingly, although there is no official source, across the Black Sea in Khazaria, they worship Baal a.k.a. Satan. It is there that they continue to practice the dark arts. And I'm going to read the rest. In Interestingly, although there is no official source across the Black Sea in Khazaria, they worship Baal, a.k.a. Satan. It was there that they continued to practice the dark arts of sacrificing children. Did they actually migrate there? That's what he's asking if there's no official source. They were forced by Russia to accept one of the Abrianic religions. That's what the lady just talked about. They chose Judaism. But they still kept their worship of Baal and child sacrifice. They created versions of Judaism called Babylonian Talmudism. The Talmud is wicked. They were forced to migrate and settled in northern Europe. The Phoenicians were masters of the sea. There is some evidence that Etruscans, who ruled over the Latin tribe, were Phoenician colonists that or the Phoenicians traded with the Etruscans League. Rome overthrew the Etruscan kings and established a republic. Notice how all of these things is linking up to that same system. We're going to go deeper into this. We know the Phoenicians colonized Carthage which is interesting because there's evidence, some say, of them making it to North and South America. Catherine's most famous general was Hannibal, who, was, who almost destroyed Rome. Reincarnation possibly of Hannibal and Hitler. Thoughts? Just a question. I don't know. Y'all tell me what y'all think. Because of their prophetic sea prowess, 
Many speculate that they migrated all over the world. Evidence of the remains in America came with Scott Wolfter on American Unearth in Chicago River. There is a sacrificial statue, sacrifice official statue, the wannabe stone that some say Phoenicians use. Coming up the Mississippi, there's also a statue. As promised, this is that picture of the statue of Moloch that's in Rome, which was a Canaanite god showing who they really worship. And also, this is the child sacrifice stone found that was found on the Mississippi River, which I believe they said was a, a idol to the a god Baal or Moloch for the same thing for child sacrifice. So <laughs> sickening. It's sick, y'all. It's sick. But they really didn't follow Judaism. It was kind of like a cover up. They took on the traits and the ways of Judaism on the outside, but actually had Luciferianism in it. And this continued on for a long time until Russia got wind of it again and staged a coup. Of course, these people are very smart though. The Khazarian Jews, they owned the Silk Road and they made people pay toll. So they were also very rich. It was all nobility. Okay, all of these people are all nobles. They have like huge amounts of money. They heard of this coup and they fled, right? And there was a massive exodus to the West. And the Khazarians kind of being on the run, they had to change their name. And they changed their name to none other than Ashkenaz, which if you go back into the bloodline, Ashkenaz is from Gomer. So Ashkenaz would be the uncle to Khazar. But why take on their name? It was their enemy. And if they were found doing something satanic or terrible, it was going to be labeled the Ashkenazis who did it. So as they are moving westward, they are establishing like colonies from like Germany to France. And they're leaving people along the way to infiltrate the towns and become parts of the community and then whisper back to tell everyone what's going on. And who settles in the town of Frankfurt, Germany? None other than the Rothschilds. Now where they settled, they set up a bank. And the man who set up that bank had five sons who also set up their own banks. And these men were treasurers to the king and to the Vatican. Now there was a man by the name of Edmund D. Rothschild. And he started to purchase huge, massive amounts of land in about 1899, which led to the establishment of Israel. And it turns out that the Rothschilds actually played a huge role in funding Israel's governmental structures. Now, as these Rothschilds go on, they are continuing to buy up land to include places in Palestine, in Syria, and in Lebanon, all with the goal of having the state of Israel. If the Ashkenazi Judeans are the ones who funded the state of Israel to be the state of Israel to have any land, both Khazar and Ashkenaz are of the line of Gomer, which is of the line of Japheth, which is technically Gentiles, the nation, because Abram is of the line of Shem. That's where the Israelites come from is the line of Shem, the true Israelites. Now, I did like a eight or 10 part series on this a couple of years ago. If you want me to find them and repost them, I will. Probably do it on my secondary account though, because it might get me banned on this one. Or just look into what the Rothschilds tell you about themselves and their ventures in trying to buy land for Israel. In the next video, we'll be discussing true Israelites. They are gathered and scattered. Until next time, God bless.